joining us for the third quarter earnings call for FY24. Uh, this quarter highlights our sustained performance in the branded segment, which accounted for 72% this quarter. Steady increase in revenues quarter on quarter in Germany on the back of incremental tender wins we've had, some of them starting in the next fiscal as well, and a stable US-based business. We should see new launches in the U.S. starting from quarter one of the next fiscal, which will further help in enhancing the overall company performance from next year. Our efforts to enhance cost efficiencies are playing out well in the margin improvement. Our operating EBITDA margins at 31.8% looks to be the new sustainable base going from here. During the quarter, the exceptional items of 88 crores relate to the net gain from the sale of liquid facility in the U.S., which was impaired during the earlier years. In terms of key financial performance indicators for quarter three, revenues were 2,732 crores, up by 10% YOY. Operating EBITDA for the quarter is 869 crores, up by 20% YOY. Operating EBITDA margin stood at 31.8%. Other income includes forex translation losses of 35 crores, likely to get reversed in the coming quarters. Uh, the board has approved an interim dividend of rupees 22 per equity shares. Uh, the overall leverage, which is uh, to EBITDA, uh, now stands at 0.88x. I'll now hand over the call to Aman for India Business. Thanks, Sudhir. India revenue at uh, 1415 crores registered a growth of 12%. As per the AIR3 data set, IPM growth for the quarter was at 9%. Our growth was driven by new launches, performance of top brands in focus therapies, and positive traction of the consumer health business. Uh, the Curatio business is now fully in the base as the acquisition was done in October 2022. Torrent remains number one amongst the generic players in the CETA Glipton market, uh, clocking uh, over 100 crore sales on a mad basis as per this quarter. The consumer health division is progressing well, aided by new channel activations and increase in distribution in, into newer towns. We continue to see robust growth in our flagship brand, Shellcal 500, supported by the impact of the national media campaign initiated to, towards the end of the last quarter. We would also want to point out that uh, brands that have switched to the consumer division, such as Shellcal and Teddy Bar, uh, may not be fully reflected in the AICD data set because they have a different uh, distribution channel, hence the actual growth may be higher than what is reflected in the data. At the end of the quarter, Torrent has 20 brands in the top 500 of the IPM, with 16 brands more than 100 crore sales as of March December 2023. Field force strength at the end of the quarter stands, stands at 5,700. We expect the India business to continue outperforming the market growth. Our focus during the rest of the year will continue to improve our market share and focus therapies, improving new launch performance, improving field force productivity in the expanded divisions and regions, and continue the scale-up of the consumer health portfolio. I'll now hand over to Sanjay Gupta for the international business. Thanks, Aman. Uh, let's begin with Brazil. In Q3, uh, constant currency revenue was Brazilian realized 185 million, registering a 17% year-on-year growth. Growth is supported by new launch momentum and a robust pricing environment. We've had a consistent pace of launches. Four brands were launched in 21, four in 22, and three again in calendar year 23. Going forward, we intend to maintain three to five branded launches per year. As per IQVIA, market growth is at 6.5% for Q3, and Torrent's growth is at 11.6%. Expansion of field force and CNS has been completed. In Brazil, now we have three sales teams, two in CNS and one in cardiodiabetes. Total number of reps is 318. This will enable us to expand our reach and support new product launches. In Q3, our generic business in Brazil has continued to deliver and presents about 14% of overall revenue. We sell 24 molecules and are seeking to add between 5 to 10 each year. Currently, we have 15 products awaiting and visa approval. Moving on to Germany, our German business has registered a constant currency revenue of 30 million euros, up by 5%. During the quarter, we won incremental new tenders, which will start delivering incremental sales in Q2 of 24-25. Since three quarters, we have had an overall increase in the value of wins. This results in a large part due to our cost optimization efforts. We are also experiencing better conversion of existing tenders. 
that is, our share in free play wind has increased. Year to date, we have launched seven products, seven molecules. Next few years, we will continue to launch 10 or more products a year. Our overall share in the German generic market has reached a new two-year two high of 5.7% in Q3. In the U.S., we registered constant currency revenues of U.S. dollar 33 million, down by 7%. Sequentially, we have seen a 10% growth in revenues backed by new contracts. New product launches, as mentioned by Sudhir, will start from Q1 of FY25, and this should fuel the growth going forward. We expect about seven to eight launches in the next fiscal year. To conclude, our focus will remain on deepening our presence in branded generic markets while continuing to grow in Germany and returning to profitable growth in the U.S. Michelle, we can open the call to questions now, please. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Tushar Manudhane from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Hello. Tushar, Hello. we request you to kindly use your handset, please. Your audio was not clear. Yeah, now am I audible? Yes. Please proceed. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just on the gross margin front, sequentially, uh, where the Indian say, India sales has been pretty stable, even Brazil sales have improved, uh, but the gross margin have dipped. So any particular reason you would want to call out? So, Tushar, it's actually uh, the... U.S. sales has gone up by almost 3 million, I would say. Uh, so what's played out is although there is uh, there is this uh, gross margin uh, going down by uh, half a percent, uh, it's actually uh, led to an improvement in the operating uh, leverage and thereby improving the overall EBITDA margins, I would say. So it's basically the mix which has uh, caused the uh, dip by uh, half a percent. Got you. Uh, in Brazil, at least the last two years, fourth quarter has been much stronger than the earlier three quarters. So, uh, would that be a similar phenomenon this time as well? Um, sir, I would guide you to uh, uh, what IQS is showing us right now is that um, uh, uh, the market is at about 6.5% and torrents about 12%. I think that's a much better indicator than primary sales on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis because in Brazil, sales vary, um, invoice sales vary on a quarterly basis. So I, 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 I would say that we are looking at, uh, um, you know, double-digit uh, growth in Brazil, um, and uh, we'll see what it gives in Q4. So double-digit growth on a year-on-year -year basis, right? On the Q4 correct, basis. Correct. In line with what you see in IQVR. Yeah. Okay. And uh, even on Germany side, the tenders which we had won in the past where the revenue was supposed to be coming in fourth quarter. So from that perspective, Germany also would be looking better uh, in, uh, in the coming quarter. So this quarter we touched 30. And uh, generally, uh, we should uh, keep seeing a trend up the, uh, um, upward direction in the next three quarters. And just one last on uh, any regulatory update on uh, Indra? No, we're still uh, pending inspection. Thanks, thanks a lot for addressing my questions. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Damyanti from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, when you said 31% kind of margin looks uh, is sustainable with uh, going ahead. So uh, can you talk about uh, the, uh, you know, uh, headroom improvement uh, which is, which might be available for Kurashio? Are you broadly done with the improvement margin uh, which you are targeting? That's why, uh, uh, like, we might be looking more at the sustainable margins or, uh, like, you have more room to improve there? Yeah. I think uh, Kurashio margins have improved uh, uh, what is the last quarter, I would say. So there has been improvement which is continuing for Kirashio portfolio. 
But I think what I can guide you from here is uh, look at uh, India business uh, as one portfolio. And uh, the two levers which I keep on talking about uh, plays out every year, which is, uh, you know, the margin improvement because of price increase and operating leverage uh, because of the incremental growth coming in. And that should continue playing out for the next year as well. Okay. And any uh, expectation or any uh, assumption about the uh, volume part of the market uh, which you might be building in right now for next year or so? So, talking about the India market, uh, the yes, quarter yes, yes. data was uh, for the market about 9% growth. This time, talking AIOCD, uh, which was 1% volume, rest was new products and price. As against the 1% uh, volume growth, we have done 3.5% volume growth and 4.1% of new products. So, new products maybe should start tapering down over the next few quarters, uh, but that would then start converting to the volume growth. Uh, we sense that this similar level of growth should continue in the next coming quarters. Okay, somewhere like three, three to four percent kind of volume growth you are comfortable. That's right. Okay, and uh, my second question is on uh, uh, like status of uh, supply ramp up from Dahej. So although like we have seen a sequential improvement, like minor improvement in the U.S. sales, but uh, like. How are uh, supplies picking up from Daesh, uh, and what are you focusing on? So, so I think uh, Daesh capacity is kind of, uh, we worked on realigning the capacities uh, to bring in more cost efficiency, I would say. Uh, so it's some balancing which we have done in terms of uh, uh, picking up some high volume products out of Daesh and uh, uh, taking it to CMO. So that's, uh, that's something which has happened. And uh, the capacities now which are available at the age are good enough uh, to take care of the new launches and the products which are shifting from Indra to the age, I would say. So uh, in coming quarters, uh, it should definitely move up from just 33 million uh, sales which we have seen for the uh, quarter. So, so what, what we said is quarter one of next year, we should start seeing the new products coming in and then we should see an uptake. Uh, happening from here. Okay, so first quarter. Next. Okay, uh, my uh, next question is on uh, Brazil business. So, generic now you said uh, moved up to 14% of total uh, uh, total segment sales. So, uh, can you talk a bit about like your launch plan for both the branded generic part as well as the generic part and uh, what will be your priorities for Brazil segment in next say, two years or so? No, uh, it's 14 percent, yeah, not uh, so one four. So uh, yeah, yeah, 14, one, 14, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. So, uh, so essentially, uh, we think both businesses are, are, are present a good opportunity for Torrent. On the BG side, uh, so far we are limited to CNS, cardio, and diabetes, and uh, we have three teams. So our goal is to launch about six products, ideally five to six products a year, because brand li brand launch requires heavy lifting. So we all, you know. A good uh, good rhythm is one one brand per team every six months, so um, that would be the focus, and uh, it would be the focus in our current day therapeutic area. And over a period of time, we are looking at adding additional therapeutic areas like dermatology, um, oncology. So we would add those in due course. We are in the process of building the portfolio to do that. Uh, so that would be the focus of the BG business. On the generic side, we are agnostic as to which therapeutic areas. So uh, ideally, we should launch about ten products a year. Uh, and currently we are selling 24 molecules and um, we think there is plenty of room, headroom available for growth in the GG business also. Um, we don't need to expand the team further, so we have a sales team of about 12 people for genetics and I think that's good enough for us uh, for, for quite a while. So there's, a, I would say, room for operating leverage in the GG business and we would be looking to expand our portfolio and increase our share in the molecules which, uh, which we sell. Okay. Uh, one uh, just uh, last point on Brazil vision. So right now you have uh, BGS, uh, the BG portfolio, GS portfolio. And do, do you have presence in tender market also, or it's uh, not there anymore? No, we discontinued that business uh, a few quarters ago. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from BOFA Securities. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Um, on the India business, Aman, uh, how much would the uh, trade generic and the consumer healthcare piece be of the total India business? I'm just trying to understand how much growth we're seeing in the actual branded generic business versus these new areas that we have been trying to grow over the last few years. So uh, trade generics would be uh, maybe, you know, 2%, 3%, I think, total of the base, which is growing at about 25 to 30%, depending on the quarter of seasonality. Uh, that kind of growth, that level of growth in trade generics, we see to be uh, continuing for the next uh, one or two years. Uh, and we aim to kind of make this a, a, a meaningful business over a three to five year period with reasonable profitability. Uh, so the focus has been on selecting products which are uh, 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 higher gross margin compared to the more commoditized products. So that's why, there, though there are many more SKUs that can be launched, we'd rather focus on ramping up uh, profitably. In terms of consumer, it's, uh, we're not looking at it separately because the, the brands are all, also part of the prescription business. Uh, but just to uh, recap, we only have four brands that are in the consumer uh, channel right now, which are ShellCal 500, uh, Teddy Bar, Uni Enzyme, and Ahaglo. So okay. uh, the reflection will be in the prescription portfolio, but the investments and marketing will be on the consumer side as well. Okay, got it. So basically to have more uh, national ads, etc., like you had for Shell Call. That's right, that's right. Got it. And, you know, we are seeing uh, a lot of our uh, peers obviously trying to expand into, um, you know, the chronic segment. It's much talked about uh, by everyone. Um, uh, particularly in markets that, you know, uh, uh, Torrent is very strong in. In that context, how do we see ourselves trying to maintain our market share or even maintain this 3 to 4% volume growth that you have talked about? You know, um, how do I balance the fact that, you know, there is increased competition, there are new player players trying to get in as well as Torrent trying to protect its uh, market share um, and at the same time maintaining margins? So number of factors uh, would be at play here. Uh, one is obviously focusing as much as possible on new launch performance, which uh, our track record of the last two years has been very strong and above the IPM uh, growth of new products. Uh, so if you can get that right uh, in as many products as you can, it kind of uh, makes up for any volume loss in a, in a product that's maybe going uh, on a decline. So our focus has been to ensure that new product uh, launch performance is the maximum possible. That may be by way of field force expansion or further divisionalization. And uh, our focus therapies here will remain uh, the, the same which we are currently looking at, which is diabetes, uh, cardiac, gastro, VMN, uh, and pain. So in these segments, we remain fairly confident that our pipeline is robust and uh, our field force expansion, which has now uh, been ongoing for the last 18 to 24 months, uh, does give us enough uh, headroom to continue the above market volume growth for the foreseeable uh, coming quarters. So you don't see the need to add more MR to the 5,500 number that we have in place to, you know, uh, keep the growth momentum in the India business? No, so we have already added a, a significant uh, number of MRs in the last uh, one and a half years. Now uh, it should be more incremental. We think maybe uh, two to three hundred reps per year uh, could be kind of uh, a base level, and depending on any new po product that comes up, it could be slightly higher. But uh, nothing as much as we've done in the past two years for sure. Understood. And um, I know you don't want to talk about Kirusha separately. So if I were to just say the entire portfolio that we have acquired, the pediatric derma portfolio. Initially, we were very strong in South. Um, and West, and the idea was to take, make it more pan-India. If you could give us some color in terms of what's the doctor coverage we've been able to achieve, you know, since it's been a year, um, you know, how much more do you think there is to go in that? Um, and now that you've moved Terry Bar to, um, you know, the consumer healthcare, is there any other brands that we can look at or brand extensions that we can look at on, uh, you know, the acquired portfolio? So we have uh, done uh, both. We've also added the... Uh, uh, doctor coverage in curation also uh, merged some divisions, so it's, it's a factor of both. So that's how we've been able to uh, get a lot of cost energy in the last one year as well. Uh, so doctor coverage, I would say, is increased by maybe 20-25% uh, for pediatricians and dermatologists, and uh, it's still not 100%, so we will be planning to increase it in the next uh, uh, year or so. Uh, in terms of the regional growth, uh, we've been able to 
further strengthen the strength area, which is the south and uh, part of west regions. So we are seeing accelerated growth in almost all the top brands here, uh, led by Teddy Bar, followed by uh, Atogla, which is the lotion, then there's creams. Uh, so this uh, basket of uh, uh, baby skincare products uh, has kind of really accelerated in the strength regions. And uh, the weaker areas, we're seeing some improvement, but still it's not nowhere close to the, the growth that we're seeing in the south, for example. And we think that over time, this should gradually increase. Uh, so as of now, we would say that uh, focus is on strengthening the core while gradually expanding in other regions. And efficiency has almost been achieved to an optimal level, I would say. Uh, so number of divisions have been reduced from six to three. Uh, yeah. And now we'll gradually improve the number of MRs possibly in the next six to nine months. Got it. Um, last question, if I may. Uh, Sudhir, now that we're less than one time net debt to EBITDA, you know, and a lot of the uh, noise around m and has gone away, you know, should I think about uh, Torrent looking at more, uh, you know, deals like we have done in the past in the India business? No, I really don't know. I really don't know how to answer that, Neha. But I think as of now, there's nothing on the plate. I can tell you that. Understood. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Just the first question on the overall India industry growth, right? It's, uh, you know, if you look at any data source, it's been trending down, uh, right? Like you said, your press release calls out about 9% growth for IPM, right? Uh, I know we are growing faster, 200, 300 bips like we have guided, but just want to understand, uh, you know, and it seems to emanate more from volume growth, which you have better. So just trying to understand what's happening from an industry standpoint and what we are doing differently to increase our volumes. So industry growth, uh, you're right, that it's been uh, not very uh, predictable in the data set that comes out. You know, there's fluctuations both in, in both the data sets. Uh, but I guess if you look at it on a annualized basis, it still might give a more accurate picture than a quarterly basis. We think that the market growth uh, has more or less stabilized now. If you recall, the earlier part of the year, there was a acute season that was low, and that's why there was a reduction, but then that was made up subsequently. Uh, so, our belief is that if we are growing at this 12% range, the market has to be in the range of at least uh, 7 to 9%. And structurally, we don't see that changing anytime in the near future. Uh, as to how our growth has been above uh, the market growth in terms of volumes, essentially just going back to uh, new launch performance, particularly in the chronic space, and the field force expansion that has been taken in the last two years. Got it helpful. I, I don't know whether I got the MR number right. It's 5,700, right? Or is it 5,500? Sorry. No, 5,700. We've added a few MRs, but also we've uh, uh, merged a few divisions. So net number is 5,700. Got it. And on top of this, on an annual basis, you plan to add uh, 200 MRs. Uh, uh, no concrete number yet, but you can expect that possibly by the end of the year, uh, maybe 300 can be added. Understood. And uh, any any commentary on, on the productivity of the field force? Uh, where does it stand right now? And is there any aspirations uh, of where we want to reach? Yeah, so pre-expansion and pre-curatio, we had crossed the 10 lakh number. Uh, right now, obviously, we have uh, dropped uh, because of the number of reps added. Uh, I think we are right now in the range of 8.5 to 9, somewhere in between there. An aspiration remains that we want to go back to the 10 lakh level as well, which should be uh, possible by the, the growth in the business and now more stabilization in the number of MRs. Uh, helpful. Second question is on the U.S. business, uh, you know, uh, just looking at uh, the commentary that growth will start from 1Q. Uh, where are we on in terms of price erosion? Are we, because of the lack of launches, are we still seeing higher side of price erosion? Uh, uh, I would say we are seeing a low single-digit price erosion right now. Okay, and, and, and what is the prognosis here? Do we think that this remains and once the launches start, you will start seeing uh, like high single-digit value growth, you think, for next year? How, how should we look at U.S. business next year? Uh, I will not make a sales forecast because, honestly, uh, it, it, we have about seven to eight launches in the next uh, 12 months. 
um, but uh, the sales uh, w that will come will depend upon the level of competition. So, uh, so which of which I, I currently don't want to project as to how many players will show up at what time. So we'll see. But the momentum and the direction should be upward. And, and I think the opening remarks, there was a comment about profitable growth in the sense that in the U.S., so if Correct. we reach the kind of scale that you're talking about, uh, you know, when you mean profitability, what are we referring to? Uh, we are referring to positive operating uh, profits before R&D. Correct. Okay. <coughs> EBITDA, so EBITDA before R&D. Yeah, pre-R&D yeah. EBITDA. Okay. Correct. And where is that now? Like, it's negative, I, I get it, but how uh, far? It's, it's kind of break-even, I would say, at this point. Sure. Okay. So we are we should start good things happening. Got it. Uh, last question on, again, sustainable margin, I thought was not 31, right? 31.8 is the number for the quarter three. So it's 32 then should be what we should assume as a base going forward? Correct. Correction. That's what I meant, yeah. Got it. Helpful. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may please press star and one now. We'll take the next question from the line of Rashmi Shetty from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so what will be the R&D guidance now in FI 25, 26 since the U.S. business will be picking up? I think this should be around five to five and a half uh, uh, for the next year. And maybe for FI 26, between five and a half to six maybe, I think so. Okay. And so with all the businesses on track now, U.S., Brazil, uh, Germany, and even India, and, uh, uh, you know, the base level is now, uh, of EBITDA margin is around 31.8%. Uh, are we targeting, you know, that annually every year we should improve at least your margin by 50 to 100 basis points? That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks, Dr. Samar. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may please press star and one to ask questions at this time. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, I have a question on Brazil. Now, uh, on Brazil, uh, you know, on the macro market growth, which seems to have picked up a bit, uh, you know, what do you sense, uh, what has really driven, uh, you know, this improvement in uh, the underlying market growth? And what is the sense and how does it play out here from here on? So I've said uh, multiple times, Brazil is intrinsically a market quite similar to India. There's a lot of unmet needs and it should be a double-digit growth market. Um, and it is uh, two factors. Uh, I, I, would, I would say three factors. One is there's a high level of products going off patent. So that leads to a um, volume growth in the branded generic segment because while the patent is on, the volumes are kind of muted. And uh, as you as you take products off patent, the volumes tend to increase uh, quite dramatically. Secondly, Brazil is a positive pricing uh, uh, country. Every year we get price increases in April. Usually in the past years it's between five and ten percent. So I would expect like on average to be five percent uh, price increases available to us. So uh, volume growth, new product launches, and pricing should give you a market which grows high single digit, double digit. So that is the reason. And in terms of our own plans for the market, apart from uh, launches in the three categories where therapies we present right now, I mean, is there a plan to add some more therapies as we go along? Correct. So we're working on the portfolio. So, it, you know, because of the reps involved, you need a, I would say, a <clears throat> decent-sized basket before you start a promotional team in a new therapeutic area. So we are building that. Uh, specifically, we've been uh, building over the last couple of years in dermatology, at some point, we'll pull the trigger and start a derma, derma field force. Okay. And secondly, on on the uh, the uh, you know the RW markets as they are, ex Germany, ex uh, ex Germany markets uh, which are there. Uh, anything uh, you want to call out? Uh, any markets where we made uh, reasonable progress over the last few, a couple, few quarters, uh, and and what is looking promising going forward? So um, actually, we so on, there's two markets that we don't speak about where we have made decent progress. So one is on the on the generic generics. We've had good traction in the UK. So the UK is right now trending at more like 25 million pounds a year. 
So it's a, it's a good momentum market, and uh, from the base that we have, we see positive momentum. Uh, secondly, we don't speak in the branded generic size about a market like Mexico. So Mexico currently for us is trending again in the same ballpark, about 22 to 24 million dollars a year, growing at a roughly 30 uh, percent. It's a specialty CNS company that we have, and um, you know, it's, uh, we, next year we will have about close to 70 sales reps in Mexico, and it should continue to do well. Uh, we are the second largest Indian player in Mexico, and you know we, we should uh, uh, be attaining number one down the line. So, if I just go back to Brazil, uh, in terms of size in Brazil, uh, what is our size in the in the branded generic market in terms of uh, you know size of the companies which are there? Uh... So, we are by far uh, the largest Indian company, and if you rank all pharma companies in Brazil, Torrens Frank is number twenty. Uh, this is including the innovation innovator innovators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how has this changed over the last three years or so, in terms of uh, ranking number twenty? I think about like if I remember about five years ago it was twenty seven, twenty eight, and then uh, last year it was twenty two, and now it's twenty. Currently running at twenty. Okay, and uh, like the way uh, we understood Indian market, uh, I mean, is this a business where? As long as there's revenue growth coming in, it's a, it's a business continue, leads to continuous margin imp improvement uh, for, as we go forward? Yeah, Mr. Menon will comment upon it. Uh, is Brazil also a market where it leads to continuous margin improvement? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Nitin. Uh, I think what's positively playing out for Brazil now is uh, it's reached a particular scale, right? And uh, the expansion uh, which we did uh, some 18 months back uh, with uh, better growth coming in Brazil, the operating leverage uh, will be much better than what we see in India, I would say, because the fixed costs are comparatively very high in Brazil compared to India. So that story is playing out quite well, I would say. Okay. So you know, just uh, taking off from there, uh, you know, uh, so we on you saying there is a there is a serious positive operating leverage in Brazil, and I guess U.S. with the scale that we start to get, incrementally with whatever growth we get, we should get some positive leverage coming from there also. Great. So overall, uh, these two should be further positive uh, factors from a, from a you know margin expansion perspective as we go forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And and last so at least, reason, at, least US is, at least US is not going to be negative on the overall margin improvement story, which continues every year. So I think more positive uh, play happening uh, for the next year. And Aman, uh, in terms of India, you know, how are you looking at the new launch uh, landscape for the next uh, 12, four to five quarters? Are there uh, some interesting opportunities uh, which are there? Yeah, in the next uh, six quarters, there is uh, there are a few interesting opportunities. One is in the chronic space. One is in the subchronic space. Uh, this will be more like the the day one patent expiration launch. So we expect uh, a number of players uh, on the same day. But uh, our recent track record gives us confidence that we should be in a uh, leadership position in, in these launches. Uh, these are the two big ones. Uh, uh, there will be some smaller kind of extensions and uh, combination launches that will be also in addition to this. And since you mentioned that, on Sita Glipton, uh, you since refer that in your, in your conversation. What has worked for us in your assessment in Sita Glipton? Uh, it's a reasonably competitive market. Uh, difficult to pinpoint, you know, one or two single factors, but I think overall, probably the expansion that we have undertaken, because the biggest number of MRs that we added was in the, the chronic uh, cardio and diabetes divisions, uh, that seems to have played out for us. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on their touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Tushar Manujane from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. No, sir, we are not able to hear you. I'm sorry. Hello, I'm audible? Yes, this is better. Yeah, thanks. So just this uh, break breakup of this uh, ROW and contract manufacturing sales, if you could share. Yeah, for sure. I don't have it right now. Can I share you uh, after the call? Sure, sir. And uh, secondly, just on the India market again, the the, the in licensing of uh, products. Any any thoughts on pursuing that as a strategy, given that we have such a strong presence on the chronic side? Uh, 
Yeah, so in the last uh, 12 to 15 months, we already have signed two licensing deals. One was uh, in November, uh, which was the latest one. Uh, we continue to explore uh, many opportunities, mostly in the chronic space. Uh, so we do hope that this run rate of licensing deal should continue. Uh, it is becoming a, a more and more of a kind of a, 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 a lower number of pipeline opportunities, but we think, still think there is a lot left in terms of newer uh, treatments that are available. Uh, so we probably would think that one licensing deal per year in a chronic segment is something that we can target. Got you. Thanks. Thanks a lot for this. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may please press star and one now. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mrs. Sanjay Gupta, Executive Director of International Business for Closing Comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you for attending today's call. Um, uh, I, I think we should stop here. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Torrent Pharma, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us 